What's going on everyone, Ted Carr here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how many followers do you need to have to get started making an income online. We're gonna talk about Instagram, we're gonna talk about YouTube. How many followers do you need to have? How many subscribers do you need to have? How big does your fan base need to be before you should make an ebook, before you should make a meal plan, before you should release a workout plan, before you should release coaching or offer coaching, before you should actually have a product or service that you offer? How big does it need to be? Well, the answer is not big at all. Thankfully, that's the answer, not big at all. I'll tell you why it doesn't have to be that big at all. Because if you wait until you have a big following before you start selling products, how are you gonna make money in the meantime? Also, if you wait to have a big following and then you start releasing products, what if nobody likes those products and nobody buys? You just wasted all that time building that following to then offer something that nobody even wants. So. What you can do instead is when you're really small, like let's say you have 500 followers or less, or any size following, let's say you have freaking 10 followers or less, or 5,000 followers or less, whatever, it doesn't matter, just wherever you're at now, follow, forget the amount of followers you have, you wanna start now by putting out offers and seeing what clicks, seeing what makes people wanna click, seeing what makes people wanna buy, seeing what makes people interested in sending you a DM, like find out what people are actually struggling with, Find out what they want to buy as a solution to that problem and get good at making sales with a small following so that by the time you get a big following, you can absolutely crush it with a big following. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example right now. My following on Instagram, my Ted Carr account, has 1,700 followers. Not a huge following, 1,700 followers, 1,700. But last month I did $93,000 in profit. You might say, oh, Ted, that's because you have this fruitarian account that has like 40,000 followers. Yeah, but I have friends who have like twice as many followers as me who are making like a tenth of what I'm making per month. How is it possible? How can people have twice as many followers as me but be making a tenth of what I'm making? Because they haven't focused on dialing in what really sells really well when they had a small following. So now that they're a big following, they just don't know, really know what sells. So. And, and they're just getting going with it now and it's like they've kind of wasted some time and focused so much on growing their audience when they could have focused on making sure what they have sells really well and it's very profitable and then starting to scale. So yes, you do need to have an audience size, but what's more important than an, than an audience size, what's more important than, than a following size is do you have something that people actually wanna buy? Because if you do, then guess what? When you have one follower, you can make a sale. When you have two followers, you can make two sales. When you have three followers, you can make three sales. And it goes beyond followers too. Like I have 1,700 followers on Instagram, but I'm able to reach like 300,000 accounts every month because I spend money on paid advertising. And the reason I'm able to spend money on paid advertising is because I have a product and I have a service that is so profitable that I'm able to take a portion of that profit and put it into ads to reach a huge audience. So even though I have 1,700 followers, I'm leveraging, I'm leveraging Facebook's AI power and I have the power of someone who has, I have the power of someone who has like a million followers because if someone has a million followers, they're not, whoa. What's going on, there's music. That was weird. Um, if someone has a million followers, they're only reaching a third of that. They're only reaching 300,000 followers. So I basically, am, I basically have the power now of having a million followers even though I only 1,700 followers. That's what's really crazy. And what, what's more important than a vanity metric such as followers on Instagram is the amount of emails you have in your email list. And even more important than that is like, what's the percentage of open rates that you get in your emails that you send? So let's say you have 10,000 emails, but you have a 20% open rate. So you really have like an audience of 2,000 emails. That's what's the most important thing because emails allow you to sell things the easiest. When you have email addresses, that is the that is the closest indication of a true audience that you have. These are people who've not just randomly followed you, but they've opted in. They've given you their name and email address because they said, hey, I'm interested in this free thing that you have to offer. So I'm gonna give you my name and email address. So they give you that and now you have this email list in the back end and you can send them offers directly. When you have 10,000 emails, when you send an email, guess how many emails it goes to? It goes to all 10,000. All 10,000 people see that in their either inbox or junk box or whatever, but they at least get it. Whereas on Instagram, if you have 10,000 followers, only like freaking maybe 500 people are even gonna see that post. So 
keep that in mind. Emails are way more powerful, but what's even more powerful than having a freaking following an audience is, is knowing initially what is gonna sell. What offer, what offer do you have that people actually wanna buy? And the way to test this out before going out and building something and trying to sell it, being all salesy about it, is just coming up with a free offer. Come out and, and, and offer a free ebook. Offer a free meal plan. Turn my hazards on. It's like super uh, foggy here, as you can probably tell in the background there. Super foggy up, up, up in the mountains right now. Up up in the mountains, up in the Canadian mountains. That's what I'm wearing anyway. Warm jacket, which you probably don't need to be wearing because the car is really hot, but regardless, let's get back to the video. So, coming up with a free offer, testing that, and seeing if people download it. If people download your free offer, boom, you have something that people are interested in. Then on the next page of your free offer, you can offer an upsell, like a $7 upsell. If people buy your $7 upsell, boom, you have something people are interested in that they're willing to pay for. Because if you can't get people to download a free book or pay you $7 for a little upsell, what chance do you have at offering like high ticket coaching or a higher ticket online course or something, you know? So you want to test your offer with your audience when you have a very small following. The smaller following, the better, that way you're not wasting any time. So that by the time you do have a following, you already know what sells really freaking well and you're in a really powerful position to just clean up and make the most amount of profit possible. So hope this video helps. The answer to your question of how many followers should you have before you have something to sell is zero. Have zero followers. The less followers you have at the start, the better, because it means you're getting started on the most important thing first. You're not waiting to have this vanity metric of 10,000 followers or something before you actually start doing what's the most important thing, which is finding out what your audience actually wants. All right? Well, that's it for now. Peace out. Much love. Have a great day. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.